Clearing the room here in just a second, so it'll be a lot quieter. And you can actually hear what Roz has to say. I'm 
I'm happy to put the two of you in the last press in each of you towards the door. Thank you. And the last one, one of the things I do a great deal of is volunteering with free medical and dental care in the U.S., we separate medical policy starting right here. Right. Now, Obamacare does not pay the address further. If you are not you still have press, a press you have to the you have to towards the, the door. door. Thank you. The question becomes twofold. One, what can be done to provide basic uh, medical was services right within the school framework so kids don't have to come off from school and receive it? Second, the three things that can totally create a clinic is vision, hearing, and believe it or not, dental. If you're not pressed, we need you to move towards the door. Right, so, so the, uh, the, the first question is uh, adult literacy. First of all, the adult literacy programs are being cut all over the place. So, in, in Newark, the proposal is to close down the high school that surfaces adults, period. So the high school is where people will go back to school, and not get a GED, yes. but actually get a diploma. That's the idea of supposing to shut that down. Mm -hmm. Most of the adult nursing mm -hmm. programs, whether they get the prisons, so have school begin. programs, whatever, have been cut. So we are pushing heavy for uh, adult literacy throughout the city. We have a program in the South Coast called South World Leads, where we are encouraging uh, uh, all these institutions to bring folks in to teach them, uh, you know, help them read through newspapers and magazines and, and, and part public of the organization media. But what we want to propose is that we can get a trained community activists and students uh, in literacy and, and begin to send them into senior homes, into projects, into community centers to go where people are and have literacy circles and teach people to begin to read and be more revolutionary in that sense and not just create institutions where people have to come out of their house to, to go to a literacy program but to begin to go to where people are. So if you have a, 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 a community uh, a housing project with a community center in it, begin to go there, go to people's homes, and begin to train college students, community activists, to, be, to, to go out into these neighborhoods and, and do kind of one-on-one -on -one and group, small group literacy with folks uh, in neighborhoods that are distressed and have very high illiteracy rates. Uh, and, and early childhood, so adult literacy and early childhood together. I think what de Blasio is doing in New York with this kind of universal early uh, childhood stuff, making sure that kids are engaged uh, with literacy and reading and print-rich material at an early age is something that we have to invest in. Uh, and it's something that we're going to push across the other side of the, the Hudson um, in New Jersey, in Newark, to begin to do that as well. The second largest city in that area, we have to begin to, to push this kind of early childhood and, and adult literacy. Um, in terms of Wi-Fi, the Newark has a, right now has a pipeline that's under the, under the ground uh, of Newark. We have a heavy, first of all, a heavy fiber optic. Uh, technological infrastructure under the ground now. So there's a there's a, a pipeline that's under the ground now. That's um, you know some of the financial institutions are interested in putting a, a fiber optic cable through the pipeline, which will give Newark incredible access to high speed internet, probably faster than we've ever seen before. Um, and, it, and they're going to shoot it, of course, in, in the downtown areas. Uh, we, we are proposing that they begin to do that in public parks, in, in the community where people live at, uh, Weekway Park, Bellsburg Park, Brantford Park, different parks that are, that are already in neighborhoods where people are and they can have access to maybe two or three blocks from their home. Uh, so we are proposing that they do that as well, that when we push this whole uh, free Wi-Fi to, to residents, I mean, well, to the business community, because businesses are going to come simply because we have high-speed access and free Wi-Fi in those areas, and they can get it from the city at such a, a low cost. We also are telling them in order to support the city, to support that, they have to shoot that in areas. And it's just basically line of sight in areas where, you know, common areas where people congregate at in the neighborhood. Free and reduced lunch, and what well, you do I, I, is not special. Well, I think that we have to have a serious, I mean, so we, we pushed extended day uh, in Newark. Uh, my 
gospel was the first to do extended day, and y'all say extended day, I'm not just talking about more of the same. Because some people just think extended day means add 90 more minutes to the day, and that's like the most ridiculous thing I, I ever heard of in my life. If a kid is failing in 30 minutes, they're going to fail in 90 minutes. Right? So the idea is that you have to provide something that children don't have access to during the after school hours that they would have access with them that they didn't have access to during the regular day. You know, so we change, we, we give them different curriculum. We, we introduce them to different uh, things like yoga, like African uh, drumming, like Tai Chi, uh, different opportunities that they would not have had uh, in the regular school day, nor in their community at all. It just doesn't exist. And so we provide those kind of cultural enrichment pieces, but also kind of academic enrichment. So we have uh, classes like uh, information literacy or critical thinking. I mean, uh, uh, we have a, a class called Botany, which is an opportunity for kids to grow and, and look at uh, an environmental engineering. They can begin to look at green technology and things like that. These are the kind of creative things that we have to offer kids and also provide with that the infrastructure where kids are, also have access to heat, food, and different things uh, of that nature. But we have to take every institution in the city and bring it to bear uh, on the kids and, and, and begin to develop which answers the other question because Newark is uh, creating what, what, what we call these kind of urban farms or urban gardens in, in the city where we are growing fruits and vegetables and produce in, in the middle of people's neighborhoods. And so now you have these businesses that want to come in in a private sense and, and like use aeroponics and hydroponics to sell the, the goods to the local stores. But what we're saying is that we, we're not completely opposed to that, but we would like to see uh, people having shares to create cooperatives and we begin to own uh, some of those things but also have direct access to the to the food and the, uh, the fruits and vegetables and the things that they're growing in, in these neighborhoods. And, and, and I think that's a, the, the kind of access to food is, is, is fundamental uh, in, the, in our areas uh, with, with the folks in the back because we, we have very kind of limited to access to healthy food versions. Right. Well, you know what? Medical. You know what's interesting? Okay, we're here with Ross J. Baraka, mayoral candidate for the city of Newark, New Jersey. Well, in, in, well, in Newark, we have we have the federally qualified health care centers. We have those FTHCs that exist. We have there's very few of them in the country. And uh, we have one that's being run by the Jewish Renaissance Medical Center, and they run them out of the schools. So we have a very incredible uh, idea that's moving in here now. There's one in my school, Central High School. There's one in elementary schools. But they get me that information. But they're running these health clinics out of the schools, and the kids don't have to leave school to uh, have an appointment. They can go downstairs and, and, and get a vision test, dental. They have all of the things from child psychiatry to, to, to like the real issues of asthma and, 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 and the other kind of issues that kids have every day. And they can make an appointment right there, so we have that. And because they have federal quality, and because they have FQHCs there, they get to uh, have reduced costs in the kind of medical and health care because the, what they get to do at the FQHC is they get to buy the, the drugs directly from the, the, pharmacy, the, the pharmaceutical company and then there's no middleman. So they get to buy the drugs at a, and they have to at a very low cost because it's subsidized and so the medicine, the cost for the medicine is a lot cheaper than it would be if you went to a, uh, a kind of another private or, or other institution. And so we have to think about expanding that. And if you begin to start talking about changing the way uh, you know medicine is being dealt with in, in terms of this kind of emergency care to preventive care, and I think o Obama went far, but not far enough, right? So uh, we needed to take that further. But we should also be talking about preventive care. And, and that is beginning to set up health clinics uh, in neighborhoods and put doctors on hand where people live at in senior buildings. But, but more importantly, in Cleveland, they're doing something creative too. They, they are the, the same thing I'm talking about in terms of literacy. They're doing that with healthcare. They're training community activists, nonprofit organizations, 
uh, and students to go and do health assessments in communities and begin to go to people and, and, and one, see what their uh, ailments are from the very beginning and then connect them to health clinics in the neighborhood because they now have some kind of access because of, you know, uh, of the federal health care program through Obama now has given more people access to health care. So more people have that. And, and so they connect them to health care providers. But also, more importantly, they kind of identify preliminary sicknesses that people have and get them to go to a clinic as opposed to the health emergency room. Because in, in these cities, we use the emergency room as our primary care physician, which drives the cost of health care. Right. I mean, spent 28 hours in the right. and so we have, we have all these hospitals closed all the way around. Just so you realize, I read everything else we have. So the normal question is that we would wind up asking politicians about stuff on education. To a large degree, you have already addressed, although you might want more detail to flesh it out in the text on it. Oh, yeah, that's what we're right. The idea is to touch on it. Um, the reason why I focus on this is too many people do not understand and cannot anticipate a hungry child, a sick child, a child who can't see, a child who can't see. Well, they understand it. They just don't care. That's exactly. why they have books called No More Excuses. Like, poverty is an excuse. Uh, it's not an excuse. It's real. That's true of the population, <laughs> but it's not true of the people. Addressing the President Obama, uh, that we need a war on Obama. Uh, here in D.C., we do have a message from President Obama on education. Well, I think that uh, it, you know, the school system can be reformed. It should be reformed, but it should be reformed by the people who live in the community. And it should be a, a reform that keeps education public. Uh, you cannot have a democracy without public access to education. You cannot talk about doing an immigration reform act and then give public schools away when immigrants come to America. They can't fill out a lot of them. Some of them don't speak English. They can't navigate what's going on. Some of them don't have the paperwork that's necessary. They need to be able to go to a local school and knock on the door and say, my kid needs an education. And public schools provide that. Not charter schools, private schools, managed schools. Public schools provide that. When there was an earthquake in Haiti, the kids came to my school at Central High School. They come there with no paperwork. You don't know how old they are, what last grade they were in, who their relatives are. They still have a right to be educated in this country. So you can't talk about immigration reform and, and say we don't want public schools. We need public schools. To further immigration reform, you have to have a strong public school system. All the things that he's talking about theoretically works because we have a public school system. There's no democracy without public schools. Right? And, and the, 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 the reality of that is you know, there can't be a two-tiered school system. You can't have public schools for certain Americans and manage them private and charter schools for other Americans. Right? We have to have a strong public school system for all Americans. And our job as a public official, as public representation, is to make sure that those schools are strong and that they are working. We talk about activism quite a bit. Uh, our media group, DC media group, uh, occupied Wall Street. Right. Uh, what do you think about Wall Street? I thought it was uh, 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 something that started good. It was a good idea. I think it should have been finished and pushed. And, you know, people need direction and ideas. I think what happened uh, around the country was it, it proved to us that there's a, a hunger and a thirst for uh, for activism, for democratic struggle, to continue to push the country further and further uh, to become more and more progressive. I think that a, a lot of these young people, like was just talked about, don't have the, the the wherewithal, the, the historical background, or the analysis to push the struggle in the way that it needs to be done in, in a kind of strong and holistic way. We have to build a movement, like I said, an equal and opposite force uh, that, that can push against a force that's coming this way. And so it takes something more robust and more sustainable than just us doing this kind of immediate action. Immediate action should be a part of it. We shouldn't let people uh, pick our tools of struggle. So people who say you shouldn't protest are people that's trying to take their weapons away. So protest is a weapon that we use, and so is electoral politics. We use all of our weapons. We don't have the luxury to choose which weapons we can use. If you got a hammer, you use a hammer. If you got a stick, you use a stick. If you got a knife, you use a knife. And that's basically the way I look at it. We use all of those things collectively to get uh, what it is that we need. 
but we have to build institutions the same way the opposition is building institutions. And we have to create young people that are thinkers that are at the top of their game, that the best of our ideology that can go forward and run and govern and manage and organize these communities and not let people quote Martin Luther King and then create a product that's the antithesis of what Martin Luther King would have stood for. Right? And so they learn this in think tanks. They learn this in these little political institutions that they go to, uh, uh, these little think tanks, and they become fellows. Uh, and they count their fellows all over the country. And you start wondering why all these people are connected all over the country from the broad foundation of all of these people. Because they're paying for these kids to come to these institutions, to join and go to these cities and push their ideas. Right? While we take over the parks, that's a good thing. But we got to take over the institutions too. It's not enough to take over the park. We got to take over the school system and the government. That's what season is now means. Yes, they are. So that's that's so we can't, and, and that's the same way that they say no more excuses. But it, the, the idea to me is that we have to face the things that have been wrong in our country. For these things, you have to face it. Right? So racism exists. Right? White supremacy exists. Sexism and, 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 and abuse of women exists. You know, uh, this, the gay bash and all those things, homophobia. These things exist, and we have to face it, and we have to identify it. And then we have to be against it. So you can't be against it if you don't have the courage to identify it, right? You can't say that you can't deny me my heritage and say, now that's equality. That's not equality in the world, in, in a country that's designed where uh, this, where everything that's looked like you is negative and everything that don't is positive. You have to address that and say that that's wrong, right? And that little black children have the right to say that I am beautiful too in a world that's bombarded with images of them being ugly or criminals. You have to face that and say that that's incorrect. And I don't support that, you know? That's just like me going to a, a gay rights organization and say, listen, we're all uh, uh, equal here. You don't, you shouldn't uh, say anything about homophobia. It's ridiculous. If I, go, if I walk out of this place, somebody's gonna bust me over the head because I, I said that I'm uh, uh, gay or lesbian, they're not going to do that to you, right? So you got to face it and then do something about it. And, and that's clearly uh, what it is. You can't say poverty. Uh, we're going to ignore poverty. We're going to uh, su succeed in spite of poverty. No, we're going to succeed because of poverty and, and because we need to learn how to eradicate it, right? We have to say poverty exists and we destroy it. And we educate these kids so one day they can learn how to destroy the thing that's destroying their community, right? Just like people become doctors to destroy sickle cell anemia. They became doctors to fight AIDS, right? They became all of these things, engineers and all these things to, to fix things that's wrong with the world. And so we need social engineers too to begin to fix what's wrong with the world socially. One more question. Right, TFA. Well, you know, there's some really lately some progressive groups inside of TFA that are beginning to, 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 to speak out and talk, and it's been really, really interesting uh, to watch that dynamic unfold. That because ultimately you're getting a bunch of college kids and you're, you're, you're sending them into urban America. But in different places around the country, but you don't control what it is that they're thinking, right? So you have an idea that's coming up to all these places that say that the, pop, the, the workforce has got to be young all of the time, and you don't get rid of you if you turn a certain age. And, and but but the the idea is that there are some people that are involved in that that are taking advantage of these things who don't think the same way. And I've and I've had the pleasure to come across a lot of those folks, and I think that our job you know, as activists is to link with those people and, and, and get them to take charge and push and push and push and push until things become more progressive. Like if people are behind enemy lines they do the work then you need them to be there and you need them to be strong. So our, our job is to connect with those people uh, uh, and get them because ultimately people who want to teach want to teach. And some people think they want to be doctors and they become teachers and they fall in love with it and they stay as teachers. Uh, and they have things to say about what's going on in that organization. I know a lot of people uh, are like that, and we need to embrace it.
Right. Yeah, I'm Sean Johnson. I got a I was. education radio show called After Chalk Face. Um, I just want to commend you. I'm a kindergarten teacher in Ward 8. Oh. I'm a white guy. So right. I want to commend you for uh, including something in here about fathers. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's really yeah, important. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. the really only tiny quick question I have is can we take a selfie together? And I know you got <laughs> you got other stuff to do. Yeah, so yeah, I appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Thank you, man. Uh, stop other stuff like eating. Yes. <laughs> I just want to take a, a selfie that's all I want. That's cool, man. All right, man. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Man. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, folks, there we go. We just had a Q&A with Ross J. Baraka, candidate for uh, Newark, New Jersey, mayor. He's ahead in the polls right now. He is the education candidate, the mayor, uh, uh, mayor the principal in Newark, New Jersey, one of the New York, New York uh, New Jersey's largest city. So if you're in New Newark and you're voting, uh, I do would recommend that you support Ross J. Baraka and that he's a great guy, very friendly, and uh, so we hope him his best in these election times. All right. I can't be right next to him. Uh, well, I can do that. Want him to run for yeah, president. Right. There we go. Yeah, serious. No, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. CW. Yeah. 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 That's why they're always on board. I gotta get Marketing close photo. enough. Take a couple. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, you gotta move to the back. You're short like me, Mama. Go in the back. Go go. I gotta go up front. <laughs> right over. Can uh, somebody do this one? Everybody smile. One, two, three. I'm the best photographer ever. You need to right there. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't want to stop it. Take your hand off. And a little more. Councilman's going to collect. There you go. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go, folks. Hey, if you, uh, so, uh, you know, we'd love to talk to Just everybody that uh, we'll be back this week. Uh, we're in Washington, D.C. We're at Bus Boys and Poets. And uh, we'll be here for a little while tonight. And then we're moving on uh, this week uh, to cover more events around here in Washington, D.C. So thanks a lot for watching. This is at Freeman Sullivan. Signing off. Love you all and have a good night.